Welcome, YouTube world. Very excited to show you the basic main menu options and the settings that you get to play with the sliders for single player, which works offline, which I have a video on, but you don't need to watch it because I'm telling you right now, you can play the game offline without an internet connection on the Xbox. Okay, options. Here we go. I'm not going to narrate each thing. I'm going to hide my pumpkin head there because nobody needs to see that. Okay, so just kind of look real quick here. Master volume, music volume, sound effects, voice, ambient volume, graphics. We've got V-Sync on, off, and adaptive. I might narrate some of it, whatever. Third person camera offset. That's like if you want your character a little off to the side. Disable third person camera interpolation. Automatic melee combat lock. Melee combat lock target auto switch. Ocean spray particles. The camera. The sensitivity. UI general scale. Great. Now at the top, let's go to advanced settings. Now this is all on one page, okay? This is all the default, whatever's checked off. Um, I don't think I checked anything on or off. Go ahead and just pause that screen and just go ahead and read it on your own uh, because it's just going to take too long to go through each thing. It's really going to be way too boring and I don't want to make this video too long to be honest with you. So just go ahead and pause it right now. Take a look at it. It's in 1080p, I believe, so you should be able to read that even on a small iPod screen. And if not, well, upgrade to an iPad, I don't know. <laughs> All right, let's go to the controller. Same thing with this here. Uh, go ahead and pause it right here. This is the general layout of the menu, or the control scheme. So go ahead and pause, blah, pause this, I'm tongue-tied, and read it. Combat. Go ahead, pause to read. Next one, we're going to go to objects and NPCs. Go ahead and pause and read that. Okay, let's move on to crafting. Go ahead and pause and read that. And the last one, sailing when at the helm. Go ahead and pause that while reading. Now we're going to back out because that's it for like the standard options. Now we're going to go to single player and uh, well, the, the settings that you get to play with, the sliders. Now I don't know how I want to do this. I don't know if I want to narrate each one. No, I don't think I do. So what I'm going to do is like the yellow box. I'm going to like pause, uh, leave it for like a couple of seconds on each one so that you can pause it and read it if you want to or give you enough time to, to read it. So I might as well maybe read it. No, I won't. Okay, sorry. Difficulty settings. Level. Okay, that's the slider for that. Creature damage. Player damage. Structure damage. Player resistance. Creature resistance, structure resistance, your standard XP multiplier, the taming speed, structure damage repair cooldown, creature turret damage, uh, creature harvesting damage, harvest amount, player character water drain, player character food drain, Creature food drain. Yes, I played with some of these to lower them just to mess around with. Player character <clears throat> stamina drain. Creature stamina drain. Player character health recovery. Creature health recovery. Player harvesting damage. Creature count. Okay, that was the general. Now let's look at the advanced, which isn't too bad. Disable PV gamma. Allow cave building and PvE. Oh, that's pretty neat. I'll check that off. Enable extra structure prevention volumes. Use this to completely disable building and specific resource rich areas. Right. I'm narrating some of these because they might not be obvious as to what they are. I find like the general ones, they're a little bit more obvious. Uh, disable PvE gamma is really simple. Uh, you can't change your gamma settings at night because that gives an unfair advantage to people because you can see pretty clear when you crank it up. 
Enable extra structure prevention volumes. Use this to completely disable building and... Oh, I've already read that, sorry. Disable structure decay PVE. You can read that real quick. Disable creature decay PVE. PVE structure decay period, right? The PVE creature decay period. PVP zone structure damage. Structure prevent resource radius multiplier. Then we've got some of the world settings. Disable imprint dino buff. Poop interval. Your lay egg interval. Your mating interval. Egg hatch speed. Baby mature speed. Baby food consumption speed. Harvest health. Resources respawn period. Baby cuddle interval multiplier. Baby cuddle grace period multiplier. Baby cuddle lose imprint quality speed multiplier. Baby imprinting stat scale multiplier. Day cycle speed, which I played around with a little bit. Daytime speed. Nighttime speed, I sped it up because I don't like nighttime as much. And uh, spoiling time. Now, the reason I went ahead and still allowed night to go, first of all, so it looks more natural. And also, because in Ark, and I know this is an Ark, but it's partially developed by the same people that played Ark. It's almost a copy and paste. I remember resources would not respawn because I had my day cycle, like my, uh, my daytime. It never moved, so it was always noon. Get it? So the days never rolled over. Anyhow, so that's why I do that. Spoiling time, item decomposition time. Corpse decomposition time, no resource radius from players, no resource radius from structures. Crop growth speed, crop decay speed, wild creature stats per level, the health, the stamina, the torpidity, the oxygen, the food, the water, the temp, the weight, the damage, the speed, the temp, fort. Then the tamed creature stat per level. Health, stamina, all the same ones, like um, the ones that I just read. Tamed creature add per level. How much do you gain of a multiplier for health, stamina, torpidity, oxygen, food? Again, all the same ones as before. And then the affinity. Tamed creature stats affinity. I don't know what that means. Multiplier that changes the amount of health gained by creatures when they are tamed as a percentage of the default setting depending on taming effectiveness. Oh, okay. And again, all the same stats again. Player stats per level. Again. You could change a lot of these. Experience multipliers. Multiplier that influences how much experience is gained over time. Like the just generic. Actually, I'll probably play around with some of those after. So generic, kill, harvest, craft, special. Player max experience points, creature max experience points, only allow specific engrams, show floating damage text, crafting skill bonus multiplier, supply crate, loot quality, fishing loot quality, fuel consumption interval multipliers, increase platform structure limit. I think that's pretty much it. So this was almost a 10 minute video. Uh, I know there was like a lot of rambling on there. But I felt it was kind of necessary simply because there's just there's just a lot to it. And let me come back because, you know, people missed me so much. So that's basically it. And then you've got your story atlases, right? You've got uh, your ocean and Blackwood. I don't know too much about it. You could look at Blackwood, explore a small self-contained group of... Mr. Swampland and an ocean journey across a vast ocean filled with thousands of unique islands, large and small. Recruiting a crew and fighting enemy pirates and demons to ultimately discover the true nature of the massive world around you. So we're almost at 10 minutes, so that's, that's just pretty much it. So, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, give it a thumbs down. And I'll make sure when you play the game, if you make any changes to the settings. Your ships will be made out of paper mache. I'm just saying, so you know where the story goes with this. And uh, if you want to subscribe to the channel, naturally that would be great. And if not, thanks for stopping by anyways. Take care boys and girls, or whatever it is you identify as. As always, take care, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye now.